Hello. Again, my name is Agnes Hubel, Lady A for short, and I'm here at Momentum Church speaking on the gift of prophecy, as we know that it is a gift from God. I'm here this afternoon to speak to you about prophecy and prophet. First of all, I need to let you know that this is a gift that is given by God. It is not something that you can be appointed to. God appoints who he wants as his prophets, apostles, priests, those kinds of things. That's what God does. It's nothing that I wanted to do. I didn't ask for the gift. The gift was bestowed upon me years ago. And I can take you back to the third Tuesday in February of 1973 when I actually saw the hand of God. God reached his hand down to me right there in Monaco, Alabama, and called me out. When it comes to prophecy, people have a hard time accepting what you have to say, simply because they think, well, she knows something about me or he knows something about me. Therefore, I don't want to receive it. But let me share some information with you, okay? If I may. Um, and I have to commend my husband, Lester Bell Sr., who helped to promote my gift even more. He encouraged me to speak out. When God speaks to me, I have a habit of saying, no, God, I don't think I need to say anything to anybody. They're not going to receive this. But you know what? It's not for me to help you to receive it. It's for me to release it to you. The word of God says we cannot make someone a prophet. God calls and appoints them. It's a God thing. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. We just can't nominate someone because we believe they should have this role. Understand that. Just because you think a person looks like a prophet or a prophetess, and a prophetess is actually a woman, just because they look that way, that doesn't mean that they have the authority to have that gift. Only God can do that. How are prophets chosen? Prophets did not inherit the calling from their fathers, nor did they receive it by being human appointment. It was by God himself that they were chosen and called. The initiative in making a prophet rested with God and God only. I want to share something with you also about my gift, the gift that God has given me. I, I've shared it before. I don't know if I've shared it here in Momentum or not, but I've shared it with several people about how God spoke to me back in March of 2020, just before the pandemic. God gave me something at four o'clock in the morning. And I always, I've gotten into the habit of writing times down when God speaks to me. And I wrote this down. Cut for a minute, Jeremy. <laughs> you go, I want them. All right, Lord, where? Okay, I was saying that God gave me a message back in March of 2020 and it was at 4.30 a.m. in the morning. And I've gotten into the habit of writing things down when God speaks to me so that I can keep up with it for myself. But this was just before the pandemic, before we knew that the pandemic was even there. But God gave me this scripture, and it says, it's out of Habakkuk 3, 17 through 18. And it says, though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails, and the field produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, in God my Savior. Habakkuk 3, 17 and 18. Now, why God woke me up with that, that time of the morning, I don't know. But as I began to read and study up on Habakkuk, I saw some stuff. And after we found out about the pandemic, I saw that it was a God thing. He was prophesying to me as to what was about to happen. 
This is what Habakkuk saw. Habakkuk saw the seed of his day, its impact on the people of Judah and the collective corrosion of the nation. Seeking to frame what he saw with the lens of faith, he waited on God, calling out for divine help. But Habakkuk struggled when God told him his plan to punish evilness with more evilness. Would God actually use the wicked nation of Babylon to punish the relative less wicked nation of Judah? Habakkuk waited. Me being a prophet, I sometimes wait on what God says to me to tell others, simply because my thoughts are, well, God, are, are you going to really do that? Are God, are they going to really believe me? Or God, are they going to accept it? But it took me back to what God has said. It is not up to me to make the decision. It's not up to me. If God gives me something to give to somebody, I am supposed to release it. And it's up to that person to accept it, reject it, or obey it. Those are the only things that God has qualified me for as being a prophetess. And I accept that. Yes, it's hard, because a lot of the times God speaks to you. He's speaking to you about your family, your church members, or people on your job. That's who he usually uses you to talk to. And those are the very ones that will not accept it. So with that being said, when it comes down to prophecy, being a prophet or a prophetess, it's up to God to call those whom he qualifies to do those jobs. I accept my job. I accept the fact that it is hard. And I accept the fact that it is a gift from God. And I appreciate that. And with that being said, let us pray for those people that have that gift and are afraid to use it. So Father God, we come this afternoon pleading the blood of Jesus Christ upon all of those that have been called to prophesy your word. God, we pray for their strength. We pray for their anointing, Lord God, that you will just use them to do your work, oh God. God, we know that you call the qualified. And God, we thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen.